Good evening. Good evening. Air of toes. I consider myself multilingually polite, so I like to greet people in whatever language I can. I keep making the mistake of greeting people who speak Hebrew with Arab Tov, and then they think I speak Hebrew. Right. And they find out I can't. And then there's the eventual question of, well, is your mother Jewish? And that just gets awkward. But as we learn here, we need all the Jews we can get. Uh, yes, I'm Cameron Weir. I, I, was, I won't have to worry about my own HIPAA. Uh, I was a resident here as well for quite a long time. Um, in fact, just about over two years ago, um, thanks to Jeremy Poole, who was my counselor, um, I had, once I had 30 days, uh, Bob Green started taking me to open mics at Cantor's Deli. Uh, I asked Jeremy if I could do that. He said, yes, go away from here. Share your thoughts elsewhere. And it was fitting that uh, in Jewish rehab, a big part of my therapy was doing stand-up at a deli. Mm -hmm. Of course. We got a lot of hard workers here tonight. Come on, keep, keep it going again for Philip. He is yeah. slaying it. Laura, 88 keys to recovery baggage. Yeah. Put it all together. And I'm really impressed with Zach. All these yeah. wardrobe changes he's doing. Yeah. These, these, these poor folks in the second row, uh, they, they're not fooled. Uh, you've been on quite the roller coaster ride tonight, because at first you had these great front row seats to the, to the piano concerto, and then you got the metal concert. <laughs> oh, look on your faces. You're like, I really agree with the young man's political sentiments, but this is loud. <laughs> Uh, now that I'm, I'm out there quite a bit now, getting to do comedy, uh, it's it's interesting though because for a lot of the crowds, I'm explaining to quote unquote normal people who are comfortably enjoying their two drink minimums <laughs> the mind of the addict. Uh, <laughs> but here, you know, there's so many things that are part for the course for us. You know, to normal people, say a, a TV show like Intervention is a harrowing cautionary tale. But on a Sunday afternoon here, that's just a comedy marathon. <laughs> More than once, I walked through that coffee bar and heard a girl shouting, You can't shoot up in that vein, bitch! It's dead! <laughs> With just a smile on her face and a song in her heart. Uh, I, I once uh, came back from the men's room. Um, uh, I was dining out with, with a lady, and I told her that they have a really nice bathroom to do coke in. <laughs> I did not get a second date. But that's the way we think, right? Uh, you know, we're, we go in the bathroom and we start reading it. We think, wow, there's a lot of flat surfaces here. I can put some things out. You know, got a lock, nice and private. You have Wi-Fi. I can watch Netflix while I'm shooting up. It's great. See, my good friend Dan Angle is here as well. Do a lot of socializing with Dan on the outside. Dan's on crutches. All right. So, and I've socialized with Dan on the outside. Though round ladder than they are, it's okay. I've socialized with Dan amongst the normal people, and they see him on the crutches, and they of course ask, wow, are you okay? What happened? They're showing genuine concern for his well-being. But then he gets around addicts, and they ask, well, what are you on? <laughs> what they give you? It, it, if you need it, it's not a relapse. <laughs> if you don't need it, how much you want for them Percocets? <laughs> So who here has found love at Beit Shuba? This way? Yeah. Oh. Who, who here has mistaken the commonalities we share and kick and junk together for real emotional intimacy? Uh, or who just found Jay Sway? Tinder for Jews. Right, Tinder for Jews. I, I, I do enjoy the Jay Sway. Uh, it's where I can... It's where actually it gets a lot of light showing off pictures of my matching humidifier and dehumidifier. <laughs> I actually last year I went on a few dates with this uh, nice Israeli lady. Uh, she was kosher, but also living in Los Angeles, she was a kosher vegan. <laughs> Rabbi, do you know what kosher vegan is? Expensive. <laughs> I was here on scholarship. I cannot afford to take your girl for kosher vegan. <laughs> Um, but here you'll probably be happy to know that instead of uh, jumping into a relationship, I just got a dog. <laughs> That's what I was supposed to do right last summer. I, I, many of you have met my dog, Rendell. She's, she's delightful. Actually, I really don't meet too many with her. Um, I really just get talked to a lot by middle-aged men. I really should just name her Grinder. <laughs> Although, the West 
public dog park is also the nicest dog park too. So, uh, I, well, only 30% of the reason I have Brenda is to meet women. It was 80%, but she's really grown on me. <laughs> At the dog park, I, I have had, you know, an interesting, you know, men are from Mars, women are just much more sensible about these sort of things, thoughts, because she has her dog tag with her name on it and my phone number. <laughs> now, ladies, who hears, Namita was here. Mm -hmm. Okay, but any women who have their dog, if say you're at the dog park and you suddenly got a text message from a gentleman saying, oh, I, I saw you here quite frequently with your dog, maybe you'd like to get a cup of coffee. It's okay, I got your number off the dog tag. <laughs> Don't worry, that'd be what? Just red flags. <laughs> but for me, the game is on. The hunter has become the hunted. The time, the summer of seduction. Oh, my favorite pair of, of D's are in the front row, too. <laughs> Dina and Dana. How are you girls doing tonight? Enjoying the show? Yeah. Every bit of it? Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Uh, oh, where are we going to keep going with this? Uh, so, with the dog, uh, a lot of people were surprised that I got a dog to begin with um, because they didn't think I liked dogs. I like dogs. I grew up with dogs. I don't like strange dogs, okay? I'm not Donald Trump. That's, it's interesting that a few weeks ago at a press conference that, that just came up. He had to defend himself saying he likes dogs just fine. I never thought he would like dogs. <laughs> um, I was thinking early on in his administration, somebody should just give this guy a dog. Somebody would, must have thought that that would somehow soften his image a bit. Uh, Kellyanne Conway, I'm sure, I said, hey, let's get President Trump a dog. Whoever's writing those op-eds for the New York Times, though, must have come to their senses. You don't want to give that man a dog. One, he probably messed it up with something really ostentatious, with some kind of King Charles Spaniel. Or someone from his base would give him some kind of Doberman Pinscher that only takes German commands. <laughs> Schnell Donald Schnell. <laughs> and he, he ain't going to take care of that dog. He can't even take care of an umbrella. He walks away from his wife mid-press conference, and Melania is not going to be taking care of that dog. She's saddled with Baron. <laughs> not joking about the mentally disabled children. Like, I'm just noting that that's what happens when you have a child with a man who, for the better part of a decade, has an AARP card. <laughs> Autism isn't necessarily being caused so much by vaccinations. It's by all these guys running around trying to be like George Clooney. <laughs> and I'm getting the variation of a light up here, so pretty much just like sober sex, that's about as long as I can last. 